Hey you people, jumping right in on another episode on how to fly a helicopter in a sim. We're going to start out with uh, an auto rotation, which is the emergency landing procedure for a helicopter. We're climbing out of a random airfield in Georgia, the country, not the US state, mind you. And I'm turning towards the runway to do what's called a run on fall down auto rotation, meaning that we will set down the aircraft onto the runway with a little remaining forward speed. In a few moments I will roll off the throttle which will make the helicopter's nose pitch down and if I don't change my pedal input it will also yaw heavily to the left. When entering the auto rotation it is imperative that we fully lower the collective in order to maintain rotor RPMs. As we lower collective we also need to push in right pedal to keep directional stability. We will also push aft on the cyclic to stop the nose from dropping and we will use it to control our descent. If your rotors should slow down too much, you can flare up the helicopter to gain rotor speed. And if RPMs get too high, raise a little collective to make them slow down. Now here we go. Collective down, cyclic aft to maintain attitude. Right pedal and just adding in a little collective to stop the rotors from overspeeding. Speed should be from between 55 and 90 knots. Slow speeds will lower your sink rate, while fast speeds will increase your gliding distance. At the end of our descent phase, we need to decelerate the aircraft. At an altitude of 200 feet, I'm going to pull aft on the cyclic to bleed off some speed. This is called the leveling phase. As I flare up the helicopter, the oncoming airflow will increase rotor RPMs, which in turn will increase our sink rate. To stop that from happening, I have to pull in a little more collective. Now to set down the aircraft gently, I will now have to use the remaining rotor RPM to cushion the landing. All right, that happened very fast, so let's do another one. The physical principles of an auto rotation are simple, not unlike the wind propelling a windmill. Even with engine power lost, it's still possible to safely land a helicopter by entering a controlled descent and using the upward flow of air to keep the rotor spinning. In case of an engine failure, it is very important to enter the auto rotation quickly. That means, first of all, lowering the collective. Now, why is that? The collective collectively changes the angle of attack of the main rotor blades. The higher the angle of attack, the higher the lift, but also the drag that slows the rotors down. So if we keep the collective up, the rotors would slow down and the aircraft would fall from the sky. As torque induced yaw is reduced when the collective is lowered, we need to push in right pedal to keep the nose straight. As you learned in the episode Climb, Cruise and Descent, if I lower collective, the nose of the helicopter will drop. So we need to push aft on the cyclic to keep control of the descent phase. Now once we're auto rotating, we're going to use the collective to control rotor RPM. If they get too high, just pull in a little collective to make them slow down. If RPMs get too low, just flare the helicopter up by pushing aft on the cyclic. As we get close to the ground, we need to reduce our speed. To do that, we need to push aft on the cyclic, leveling the helicopter and reducing our sink rate. At the final stage, we're going to pull up collective to use the remaining rotor RPM to cushion the landing. You can see that timing is of great importance, not just when entering the auto rotation, but especially when touching down. If you pull in collective too early or too aggressively, the helicopter will climb. If that should happen, the remaining rotor RPM might not be sufficient to safely land the aircraft. So it's important to know your aircraft and to practice. For this video I chose Bell Simtex UH-1 and DCS Digital Combat Simulator. The reason is that the X-Plane helicopter flight model isn't too great on auto rotations. Most helicopter models will float like crazy on the decel phase. Alright, we're back up in the air at 1000 feet and this time I will shoot for the apron of Beslan Airport here. Again, as I roll off throttle, I will reduce collective immediately, pull aft on the cyclic and push in right pedal. There are different ways that you can fly an auto rotation. You do not have to do a run on landing. In fact, you can also do a vertical auto rotation in a helicopter. Here we go again. Flying turns in an auto rotation is absolutely no problem. Just make sure that you land the aircraft straight and level. When in real world flight training, you will probably start out practicing auto rotations without setting the aircraft down. The instructor will simply roll on throttle again after you've flared the helicopter. Due to its high inertia rotor system, it is actually pretty easy to auto rotate and land the UH-1. 
In ground effect, you can actually do a 360 pedal turn before rotor RPMs decay. Haven't tried that out yet in the sim. Leveling off and decreasing speed. Could use a little more right pedal here. And now using full collective to cushion the landing. Of course, pilots need to constantly train their auto rotation skills in real life much more than in a sim. But it sure is interesting to practice auto rotations on different helicopter types, some of which are quite a bit harder to auto rotate than this one. Now for a hovering auto rotation, same steps as before, but in quick succession. I don't have time to lower my collective fully, but I'm using the remaining throw that I have to cushion the landing. Alright, that's it for auto rotations. Let's check out some other stuff. Alright, let's get into a hover here and take a look at that beautiful aircraft right in front of us. Now, Bell Simtex model is swinging a lot in a hover, as you can see. They put a lot of work into modeling the uh, pendulum effect of a helicopter in this simulation. Nimbus Simulation released a UH-1 for X-Plane, uh, and I very, very much liked it when it was on the initial version uh, with the initial flight model. Um, but they changed the flight model in one of the later updates and since then I don't really like to fly it anymore. I'm gonna do a little pirouette here, so a 360 turn in forward motion. Notice that I nudge the helicopter to where I want it to go, so I'm giving a right side click and I'm using right pedal. Keep in mind that depending on your load status you might not have enough engine power to do a left pirouette here. Let's fly a little sideways here. And off we go. Now let's do a stall turn. I'm going to pitch the nose of the helicopter up until the airspeed uh, is at zero. And then I'm going to push in right pedal, reversing my direction of flight. Notice how the radar altimeter fails once my nose is pointed up. An aerobatic pro can do much better than this. Probably not in a UH-1 though, because of its vulnerability for mast bumping in low-G situations. Especially in helicopters with semi-rigid rotor systems, um, mast bumping is something that you need to be aware of. Um, so if you're in a low-G situation, you should avoid excessive uh, control inputs or avoid low-G situations altogether. Uh, what could happen is that the rotor hub uh, gets in contact with the mast and that means sayonara. Bell Simtech has actually modeled this in this QH1, so if you're not careful you can watch your rotor blades fly away from you. Now let's fly over to that pole there and start circling around it. I'm going to keep the helicopter's nose pointed at the object and uh, do some orbits around it.
All right, let's head back to the apron and do some pedal turns. I haven't done an aircraft review on uh, the Bell Simtech Huey. I don't think I need to do that. There are plenty of them out there. However, I can say that it is a, a fantastic helicopter simulation. One of the best, I'd say, even though it has a few quirks as most uh, models have. Comparing it to the Nimbus simulations Huey for X-Plane, this one wins hands down. Especially after they changed the flight model. Uh, I talked about that earlier. Love these little vibrations on the main panel here. Coming up is uh, New York's special VFR with ATC, of course. And I might do a short flight tutorial on Polychops Gazelle in DCS. A very disputed flight model in the DCS world. Let's do another run on landing on the grass here, uh, much like you would do it in a dangerous military landing zone. There is absolutely no problem doing a run on landing as long as you don't have any lateral movement. Scoots are built for skidding. Now let's do a pedal turn. Uh, doing a pedal turn is quite difficult in a simulator because you do not have that gut feeling telling you if the aircraft is actually moving uh, aft, forward or sideward. Make sure that you're hovering above the same spot and push the aircraft to where you want it to be. So a little bit to the right and aft to stop the helicopter from moving forward. In a right pedal turn it is usually sufficient to just let go of the left one. And for the left turn I'm going to nudge the helicopter with my cyclic to the left and aft. And I'm going to push in left pedal. But be sure to sort of slowly turn the aircraft. And try to stay over the same spot at all times. As I said, pretty difficult in a sim. VR goggles might help here, I don't know. Um, we just don't have that sense of balance, you know, our gut feeling telling us uh, if the helicopter is stable or if it, uh, you know, slowly moves into uh, one direction. Now let's fly backwards. Um, when flying backwards, just make sure that you push a, a pull in a little collective. You don't want your tail or your tail rotor to hit the ground. And then you can accelerate uh, aft. And once you want to stop that uh, aft motion, just level the helicopter or push the nose forward a bit. Alright, that's pretty much the end of this episode on how to fly a helicopter in the sim. We looked at auto rotations and other stuff, so basic helicopter flight maneuvers uh, that you could try out in your sim uh, if you like. I'm going to do a short video on uh, controls for helicopter simulation. I'm going to show you my setup uh, or my different setups and the settings that I use on the uh, different simulators. Having improper controls can be one of the main reasons why people struggle with uh, flying a helicopter in a sim. So stay tuned. Uh, thanks for joining in. I uh, hope you liked it. Hope you learned something. If you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I see you around next time.